Sometimes at the end of my day, all I need is a cold beer, a comfy chair, and a nice long game of Beyond All Reason to kick back, relax, and enjoy. And I think today that's exactly what we're going to have here for you in the Brightworks. Welcome, everybody, to All That Glitters, a map that we're all very well and uh, familiar with here. All That Glitters version 2.1. This map has been updated a little bit, actually, over the years here. I'm going to tune my sounds here. I've been, I've been fiddling with audio settings, as I am often one to do. So uh, bear with me here as I figure out the audio for this recording, but uh, spawning in the southern section of the map, representing the blue team on what will, I assure you, be a uh, very long late game uh, match here, is Throwaway69, our blue team leader dressed up in Armada colors, and I'm excited to see what they decide to go for, taking the frontline position. And damn, if that just isn't exciting to see. I love to see the, the top dog on these games go for the front position. It just really inspires me. It really moves my heart. <laughs> Throw away here. 21 true skill. Plenty of chevrons here. I've recently been updated on what these chevrons actually mean. So the way they work is it's it's based on like a ranking that is, that is measured on the... Uh, measured on the, the the leaderboards the the beyond all reason leaderboards on the website so it's it's like categories like you would have in any other competitive game you know you have like a bronze and a silver and a gold it's sort of like that except i think it's just numerics um but either way that's that's all the chevrons indicate in other words they're just another way of indicating true skill so i guess i guess uh, or open skill it's just another way of looking at it i guess it's kind of like a category rather than just a specific number but uh, anyway, that aside, let's meet our red team leader. Spawning here in the air start position. Very interesting. We have Great Thought. We will see about that. Great Thought going for some solar, some wind, and then the metal extractors, of course. Going to be getting those uh, auxiliary metal extractors, the extra three that would reasonably be considered theirs. And uh, I think I like that build quite a lot here. Now, this is a uh, this is a, a low-level game, so as far as criticality goes, I'm going to be very generous on my judgments here. <laughs> I'm going to afford the, uh, the every luxury to these players whenever I can, but of course also trying to point out when I think things might become a, uh, a little inefficient or maybe just be worth thinking about doing in a different way here. Virtual G already concerning me with this many T1 solar panels, but as long as we see either a transition into some wind power or maybe just starting up some advanced solar panels right away, yeah, I don't think it'll be the end of the world here. Same can be said for R007. Am I supposed to read that as root? I almost feel like that should be root. Also notice that the first song is always a little a little shy on the end there. Anyways, root here in the back line for the red team. Root a, uh, well... Uh, a newer player, <laughs> shall we say. Either a newer player, at the very least, a newer account hailing from the greatest of Britons. Uh, yeah, gonna be gonna be learning the backline, it would seem. It's, uh, it's risky to start in the backline because you become the subject of much critique when your team begins to lose. <laughs> it's oftentimes the, uh, the case that if you're in the backline and uh, suddenly, you know, the match starts to swing, all eyes start to fall on you. You are essentially the the savior of your team, and uh, they're they're expecting some big plays here. I saw a, uh, just a heart crushing post on the Beyond All Reason Reddit of somebody who was saying that they had heard so much about what a loving community that the Beyond All Reason uh, well community is, and they just hadn't experienced that. They had played in so many toxic matches, they had gone through all of these uh, all of these really unfortunate experiences, and I just felt so bad reading that because I really don't think it's representative of the. The, the wonderful community that we have here, but it's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate in that sometimes you just get a string of bad luck and, uh, you know, if that person is out there, <laughs> if I'm speaking to you right now, uh, keep up with it and, and maybe don't go into the, the pro lobbies, quote unquote, the, uh, the ones with, if, if, if you see a lot of silver, basically, you know that a lot of people are going to be complaining in those ones. But also, don't just trust the uh, all welcome lobbies. Sometimes you uh, you got to make that judgment, right? You can't just trust the lobby title. Sometimes you got to uh, you got to you got to choose based on who you actually see in the lobby. One of the nice things about Beyond All Reason is the fact that there's uh, there there's there's a growing number of people, but still a limited player base. And what that affords you is the luxury of getting to decide who you like and who you don't like, and who you want to play with, who you don't want to play with, because. Over a certain amount of time, you're gonna, well, you're gonna start to recognize some names. Anyway, enough blabbering about the uh, community that I so know and love here. 
Morphos has run a couple of blitzes by here and done a little bit of damage to Hajat Man, or maybe it's just Hate Man. Maybe it's, it's like a, what is that called? Not a youth, is it a euphemism? I don't think it's a euphemism. Anyway, it's a, it's a wordplay for Hitman, perhaps. But uh, these will be shut down by some paralyzers here. Um, eventually. There we go. The, uh, the Shuriken is a very nasty little device. It can shut down the uh, early game pushes really effectively, especially if it's just tanks pushing in. That's one of the most effective ways to shut down a tank push is you just send 10 or 20 shur Shuriken over there and they will paralyze everything and you can just destroy those tanks at your leisure. It's a, uh, it's a very calm and collected way of handling that. It's also very annoying, right? Because you put all that metal into it just to be shut down by a little drone that only costs 58 metal. It's a very, very cost-effective way of, uh, of, of shutting down very expensive armies here. Love the aggression from Nautilus Commander, but I love the uh, push here from Boosh even more. How's Boosh's economy looking? Uh, currently over on the right-hand side, 14 metal, 125 energy. Probably going to want to start boosting that energy production here eventually, but for the time being, he's actually looking pretty solid. Rocket bots are causing quite a bit of pain here as they're trying to push forward to scratch up that commander. Commander doing a great job of dodging, diving, ducking, and weaving out of the way of those uh, low-velocity rockets. <laughs> That's something that I feel like a lot of video games get woefully wrong about rocket launchers. Like, if you ever see a rocket launcher in real life, it's, uh, you know, they pull the trigger and then whatever they're looking at is evaporated instantly. Um, but I feel like a lot of times in video games, the only way to balance out a rocket launcher's insane damage is to just uh, make it take forever to fly across the map. Which is a bit odd. But, uh, you know, one of those one of those compromises you have to make when you uh, accept the virtual world that you're playing in, I suppose. Throwaway is pushed all the way forward here, and Swamp Strider is looking a little bit less positioned, a little less postured than his counterpart, Boosh, over here, who does have some artillery raining down on these forces over here, as well as some uh, walls to keep the, the enemy at bay. I lo really love the combination of the artillery with the walls here. I think that's a great idea. Making sure to be able to contribute some firepower back into Nautilus Commander's face. A little bit of a run-by was tried, but uh, yeah, some light laser turrets will easily mop that up. Grunts are trying to get a little sturdy here too, but they will be lasered down with a swiftness. And uh, yeah, they will not stand very much longer here as those grunts get blasted to shreds. The uh, light laser turret's actually putting up a pretty good fight here. Light laser turrets should not be killing rocket bots, but uh, that's just one of the APM limitations of the game. Sometimes you don't realize that your units are being shredded slowly but steadily by a single laser turret, and now we can see that this army has been cut in half by a single hero light laser turret. I mean, I guess he had some help from these uh, these friends of his, but <laughs> other than that, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was really a hero. Looks like Throwaway has really pushed in here, done quite a bit of uh, aggression, making sure to keep this metal extractor down is always very important. That's a uh, that's a three point two, which is much higher than average. The the regular metal extractor, if you look at the bottom right right now, is one point eight. Meaning that, whoa, we already have a Weaver in the chat. Interesting. Um, on the red team, who was that? Not sure exactly what commander just tapped out there, but yeah, one of the commanders has already left the game. How unfortunate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight man, virtual G, no. No. Uh, root, no. Oh, it was our orange player, Swamp Strider. Ah, I see. So Swamp Strider has uh, left the game. Red will take over this lane, which does kind of put Red in a weird position because now he's got to fight a very dedicated lane while also trying to keep an air force up. This is also a really dangerous push. We've got some tanks rolling on through here trying to do their very best to push forward. Taking down some of the... Uh, some of the defenses here, this exploiter, but not managing to take down the heavy laser turret. Shuriken are once again sent to the task of shutting down a lot of these tanks, and to that they will, uh, they will function to great effect. They they are really good for shutting down these pushes, just as I had called. But a few of them do leak through, especially these blitzes, which are so quick. The blitzes also technically can fire up at the shuriken; it's just not very effective, um, the damage-wise. But yeah, getting a metal extractor, sure. It's also a little bit of uh, a little bit of a distraction here as now the medium tanks have made it all the way to the base of Heitman. Hitman. We'll go with Hitman, even though it might be Heitman. <laughs> tanks aren't done, they're going to continue ravaging over here, but the shurikens are sent to task and going to try and shut these down as well as possible. 
If you're uh, considering being an air player on All Day Glitter, Supreme Straits, any of those maps where you basically always have a uh, dude stop sucking. <laughs> Not very useful critique there. Um, if, you're, if you're considering going air, I would definitely say there's an argument to start with Cortex air and eventually get into Armada uh, with the help of, a, help of a friend there. Just because the, uh, the shuriken is so powerful, especially in the early game. We've got a little bit of aggression here as well as some blue bots trying to walk their way through. There was also, were those blue paral- oh, they were blue paralyzers. Interesting. I'm not mistaken, am I? I, I yeah, I could have sworn there were some blue paralyzers. Wait a second, did I just- Ah, okay. HZF going for a little bit of a nuke rush in the back here. Uh, we're starting it in 10 minutes. Looks like it's gonna come up in about 2 minutes and 30, assuming there's no stalls. Um, that's sort of a big assumption, though, because the economy is very limited at the moment. We don't have the advanced metal extractors on all of our metal, just uh, two of them. So, limited metal income for HDF at the moment. So, bearing he doesn't stall, barring he doesn't stall, name drop. Uh, this, this will eventually come up here. Probably around 13 minutes is when it comes up, but it also takes, I believe, 90 seconds for an Armada nuke. Uh, so yeah, that's gonna be it's gonna be about 15 minutes or so before the nuke is even ready to launch Let alone getting a scout together trying to send some uh, scouts across the map I mean, it's a very low low level lobby So I wouldn't be surprised if we missed that but certainly it's something that I would encourage we'll have to uh, make that judgment when we get there, right? But yeah, getting a getting a couple of scout points out is very very important. I Was I was thinking about it and it actually turns out you can get scout planes if you are a cortex player by making a commando and then using the commando to make the scout planes you can see the, the commando can make scouts it can make uh, transports um, as well as all the other stuff it can make very very interesting you can definitely do some interesting stuff with the commando uh is it cost effective no the uh, air lab is 900 metal so <laughs> or 860 metal so it's not cost effective but you also have a commando right so you can make the scouts and then you can use the commando however you play you see fit so that's uh you know that's one option i was just Theory crafting, as I'm often one to do. Look at the amount of rocket bots. Holy cannoli here. 30 rocket bots accompanied by a couple of centurions. Uh, it doesn't seem like it, but those centurions are actually incredibly critical to this composition here. They're keeping this thing together. Uh, if those centurions aren't around, a couple of grunts, like half as many grunts, 15 grunts, can sweep through the rocket bots here if they just get a good engagement. They come around either side like this, or they come around like this, or better yet, if you have the APM to spare, you do both. Uh, yeah, you can do a really, really huge amount of dam damage, excuse me, really quickly. Had some uh, mac and cheese with garlic bread toast this morning. Figure I, uh, I'd let you guys know my my meal habits, as I'm often one to do. <laughs> Not that I think anybody cares about that, but, uh, you know, the more you know. It's been a lovely morning so far. Power is finally restored, for those of you who weren't aware, uh, as of recording this. On a, on a Thursday, um, yesterday, the Wednesday, my power was out basically all day. Apparently, our electrical system had been outdated since, like, the 80s or something. Um, horribly outdated. <laughs> so somebody came in to fix it. And, uh, yeah, everything is all good now. I don't really... I mean, you know, everything was fine for me. I didn't suffer from it, but I think there was uh, underlying issues that could have... You know, could have could have caused problems eventually, right? It's one of those prevention is better than uh, replacement or repair kind of a deals. Love the windmill spacing here by Pariut King or Pari, Pari, Pariut Pariut Kung, I, I think. Pariut Kung. We'll go with Pariut Kung. <laughs> Hot pink player. Uh, love the windmill spacing here. You want to space them out and make sure they're in uh, rows of two or just space them all one apart from each other. That'll prevent chain reactions and it'll save you a good amount of grief. Agitator built here uh, from both sides, actually. Two agitators for Nautilus Commander and a third just finished up. A uh, second one on the way for Boosh. Just going to show exactly how tremendous that uh, metal advantage is here for the yellow player. I really think what Boosh should be doing is just using this time that there's essentially nothing here to uh, start producing a lot of economy in the back of this. Just start making a whole bunch of advanced solar panels and T1 energy converters and just start ecoing his absolute living heart out uh, until eventually he's able to uh, able to keep up with the yellow economy. Oh, D-Gun, excellent little D-Gun right there. Funneled all those thugs through and managed to keep the uh, keep the fortifications alive. Heavy laser turret goes down, which is kind of a bummer, but the agitators are really the uh, the threat here. 
T2 units are out here. Those hounds are very dangerous. They can definitely melt down those T1 units with a swiftness, uh, as I've as I've already used that word before. But uh, yeah, it, it is true. They can fire away, and it only takes a couple of shots for them to burst down basically any of the T1 units here. A bunch of medium tanks also pushing through. Uh, Throwaway's commander is still in position, though. He gets a nice D-gun there. Takes out m the majority of those tanks in the light laser turrets. Clean up basically all of the rest. Medium tank warfare. That's basically what we always see on this map. Tanks are so, so good. They really uh, they really outshine bots in basically every way, except for their, uh, their cost efficiency, right? They're very expensive. And uh, although they do a lot of work for that expense, you're also, well, you gotta pay a lot of money for it. That's never, uh, never a good thing. Less money for more effect is always what you're looking for here. Interesting, the orange player did not rejoin, they just straight up left the game. It's definitely left great thought in a bit of a tricky position here. Going up to that T2 economy is quite nice. Uh, yeah, it looks like a T2 constructor was handed out, that's very good to see. Love to see the teamwork, that's, uh, that's something that I would always encourage. I, uh, I'm not super fond of all these metal extractors that are missing here, I think definitely we should get on top of claiming every single one of these. Doesn't seem like it, but it really does add up. I mean, you imagine we're uh, 15 minutes into this game. Let's say maybe these have been down for five minutes. Uh, every minute that goes by is 60-ish. No, closer to closer to 120 metal per per minute that's gone by. So you're you're looking at easily over a thousand metal um, here and there if after you uh, after you get all these, especially up and running, right? That's a lot of math, and it's probably all wrong, but uh, the, the the life lesson here is take your metal extractors as quickly as you can. <laughs> Commander goes down here for throwaway 69. Very nicely done. Speaking of which, ah, I was right on time. I was going to say, we should have a nuke launching just about any minute here. Uh, great thought. Here's the nuclear launch detected, and it looks like the nuke is headed straight towards... Ooh, the back line over here. Okay, interesting. That will take out all of Prayud Kung's hard, hard work. He is now reduced to a crater in the ground. How unfortunate. <laughs> How unfortunate. Anti-nuke comes up immediately here for great thought. Everyone is sweating bullets now that the uh, the nuke is uh, out. The first nuke that's launched always catches everyone by surprise. Uh, the second one, however, should be well reacted to. How long until the next one is charged? Ah, uh, stalling on energy right now, so actually going to not be worthwhile. Whoa, we have T2 enabled. I am just now realizing. Live reports brought to you now. Yeah, it looks like we have the experimental unit pack enabled. Didn't even realize that because usually it doesn't really come out until uh, T2, T3 stage. But yeah, we have the experimental units enabled, so that should be some good fun to see as well. We've got the, uh, the, the quote-unquote fun unit pack. <laughs> They are quite fun indeed. I really enjoy them. I, I toggle them on a whole lot, especially if you're tuning in on the streams, which are Wednesdays and Saturdays, by the way, in case you'd like to tune in for yourself. We do have a lot of fun, play on some unique maps, some uh, funky game settings. Always some really good fun. Uh, anyway, self-plug aside, yeah, there's some really fun stuff you can do, and uh, the extra units are definitely one of those. That's uh, 30 Centurion, 8,100 metal, hanging out. Meanwhile, rocket bots slowly dying. I, uh, I don't know what to say about this fight. This is just a little bit of a weird one. It's one of those, uh, you know, we'll get to it when we get to it fights. How much metal is there lying around on the floor here? 2.5 thousand metal. Jeez, that's a lot of metal. Whoops, that's the wrong key. There we go. Professional commentator here. Loads of missile trucks coming out, just being pumped out continuously from the uh, the lab here, the vehicle lab from Great Thought. Wouldn't mind seeing him go up to a T2 here. This is probably second thought, though. Not really worried about whatever this lab is up to. Kind of just using it as an auxiliary way to pump out some sort of volume of unit on this line. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay, so going up to a T2 uh, economy here, gonna get these fusion reactors up and running. Eating up the advanced solar panels, very nice to see. Gonna have the commander eat up all of those, and that will help fund these fusion reactors. Probably has enough metal in advanced solar panels here, not you. Uh, yeah, nine advanced solar panels, 3,300 metal. Definitely enough to fund the rest of that, uh, the rest of that project. So this nuke definitely should have been charged, but they were uh, stalling, they, I mean, uh, H HDF here, stalling on energy, so the nuke did not charge. 
with uh, with much expediency, and so it will uh, not be prepared. Although there is still no anti nuke over here, and so I fear for Great Thought's uh, sort of frontal base, <laughs> his expansion base in the back. Yeah, you can see Great Thought complaining in the chat. I uh, I think this is a uh, it's a case of of split APM managed in different directions. It would definitely be better if uh, Prayat Kung was just in, in charge of everything over here. Wouldn't mind seeing it whatsoever. Not that there's going to be much to be in charge of now as the nuke comes down here. Excellent nuke. Lands, takes out everybody on this lane. And that is going to destroy production for this side of the map. It is, uh, it is looking pretty thin over here. There's not a whole lot that the red team can field at this point. Every unit that they, lo they lose is going to be irreplaceable. That is pretty crippling. I'd love to see nukes on the front lines over here too. It's often understated how important that can be, but I mean, you can you can see if a single nuke lands right here, or right here, you know, any of these places just to wipe out all of this, uh, all this static defense, just a whole mess of uh, turrets and whatnot, build power, units. If that all goes away, it's a tremendous opening and you can leave so many units through the front lines. Wouldn't be surprised if that could turn the tides of a, even a losing battle, really. So far, front lines are steady, though. Headness has just been uh, sitting here for a good long while. I would, uh, I'd love to see maybe a little more, a little more aggression here. Oh, well. Another, uh, another person is tapped out of the game here. Looks like that was Hate Man. Or Hits Man. <laughs> Nobody wants to play today, apparently. Wow. Uh, suddenly, Great Thought is in charge of basically everything here. Finally, the units will be used, though. Thank goodness. A little bit of aggression finally uh, scrolls everything out here, and now you can see the tanks starting to push forward, taking advantage of that uh, exploited opening here. Another nuke was fired, but it was into an anti-nuke field, uh, which does mean that the third nuke will be the last one to hit any eco centers back here. Looks like the uh, the red team has learned their lesson, so to speak. <laughs> Medium tanks now ravaging the uh, third expansion of Great Thought. <laughs> the third adopted expansion here. Whoa, tons of fiends suddenly being produced all of a sudden out of the back lines, though. Virtual, Virtual G decides that that's enough ecoing and will finally get into the fight here. Just a matter of shutting down these tanks quick enough that the, uh, the front line isn't completely crippled. Meanwhile, Centurion's looking for a perfect trade. They start marching across the map, and they get plenty of damage done. Well, they could get plenty of damage done. They're, uh, oh, yeah, not not focusing very hard here, and eventually they'll all be mopped up. Wow, they definitely could have done a whole lot worse. Whole lot worse. Yeah, well, worse for the blue team, I mean. Could have could have taken out basically this entire base, I think, if those had split a little better. But it's also hard to blame Great Thought, who is in charge of now essentially the entire front line of the red team. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a that's a tough ask on anyone. No matter how how much APM you have to spare, that is a uh, that is a huge demand. Now units are leaking through. No defenses over here means that some fiends are able to just run their way on into the back line here. I'll slow this back down to one x speed so we can watch in glorious detail as these fire spitting demons march their way into the back line. Guess I shouldn't say demons though because it is an actual unit that you can produce here. The demon, the flamethrower mech, very badass. Yeah, Fiend's shutting down a lot of the production here for the Dark Green player, Boosh, uh, but most of it was kind of limited anyway. There wasn't really a whole lot of production coming out at this point. Mostly, the production is going to come out from the backline player over here, Paizod. Piezod. Piezod. Piezod in the mundo. That's, uh, that's not actual Italian or, or anything, really. That's just me mimicking the, uh, the sounds of language. I've realized that's my talent, is I can make myself sound like I'm speaking any language without actually speaking that language. It's a, uh, a beautiful, if not slightly racist, superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this will be enough of a front line to stem the bleed of pawns that are coming out of the back line here from Prayut Kong. But uh, yeah, the, the eco doesn't really have the, the money to sustain this production here, so... I think this is eventually just going to leave, it's, it's going to leave Prayut Kong completely bled out and uh, eventually this uh, this waterfall of pawns will cease. Gunships here in a little bit of trouble, there are fighters sent to intercept for both teams trying to uh, shut down those those gunships 
mostly just fighters going down there going to be enough of a distraction to allow the majority of the gunships to escape to safety. That is eight gunships. Very, very powerful stuff. They can definitely shut down a whole lot of uh, T1, but also some of that T2 as well. Um, trying to think of examples, I guess, like anything from hounds to uh, welders, any of that sort of stuff. Even some of the Cortex units, like Fiends, they're pretty good against. They fire an AoE shot, so they're very good against anything that kind of clumps up here. Not very not very good against tanky units, not as good against tanky units. By the way, these are the uh, Laser Tigers from the Expanded Cortex T2 Battle Unit set. Boy, that was a mouthful. And I love them. I think they're beautiful. Look at these, look at these beautiful, beautiful Laser Tanks. In my humble opinion, I think this is exactly what Cortex should lean into. Especially if they really want to make Legion into its own thing. What I think they should do... They being, like, the developers, right? I don't know who's, like, the, the, the guy in charge of all this. <laughs> I just like to talk into the void, but, uh... The guy in charge of all this, Nuke was stopped there. Uh, what I would love to see is Cortex just lean completely into the Heat Ray theme. Because the Juggernaut has it, and it's, like, its ultimate weapon. These Heat Tanks have it, and it looks super badass. What I'd love to see is them just lean completely into the Heat heat Ray theme and just make even more of their units Heat Ray based. Like, make the, make the Grunt fire a little Heat Blast rather than... Excuse me, rather than a laser blast. I don't know if the heat blast has a special property, so maybe that would have to be tweaked, but uh, basically just lean super heavy into the heat ray thing. And what that means is that it's you're suddenly free to uh, use the the uh, napalm as the legion thing. Oh, now this is epic. We've got the flying black hydra. Hold on, I gotta get a I gotta get a clip of this. I gotta clip me a photo of this bad boy. <laughs> he sails the high seas in search of his next booty. <laughs> what an epic unit. They really slapped some VTOL thrusters on here and said, let's marvelify this bad boy. What does it look like from beneath? Looks like a spaceship. There goes that heavy cannon firing away into the distance at whatever it can. Happy to. <laughs> Firing through itself, apparently. Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, so Legion. I think what Legion could stand to do is... Uh, there's an epic dragon as well. That was the plan back here, is going to the epic aircraft. So then Legion has the ability to go into... Uh, to go into the napalm and make that its signature thing. Because that's sort of what they have right now, is their... Uh, you know, their default, but... It's kind of, uh, you know, it, it kind of blends with Cortex because they Cortex also uses the fire and stuff, you know what I mean? Anyways, maybe that's just me. You could also do the uh, AoE of the Fiend. You don't have to lose that. You just make it like a flashlight, basically. It just fires like a flashing, like a strobing beam of light. Uh, and then that uh, that kind of affects the, the area in front of it, you know what I mean? It's like a, a heat wave, if you will, which I think sounds pretty cool. And the other, the other thing I would say is take the, uh, take the, take the Legion units. Wow, front lines have all collapsed, by the way, while I'm talking about this. <laughs> take the, uh, take the Legion units and, uh, make the napalm into some sort of, like, green goop. Like, make it, like, an acid bomb or maybe some sort of, like, sort of like the way that the Juno looks, where it's, like, an EMP field or something like that. And it, it can be, like, uh, you can add, like, paralysis to it while it, it, like, paralyzes, it does a little bit of damage, all that sort of stuff. Really lean into that sort of damage over time kind of effect. I think it has, uh, I think it has potential. I think it could be really cool. Assimilators brought out here the Battle Mech. They're an interesting one. They're, they fit an interesting role. They're kind of like a, a lighter version of a Razorback. They fire that super, super fast, uh super fast laser gun. Also a meatball coming out here. Meatballs are very powerful. They're kind of like an artillery unit, you could say. Amphibious assault mech. They, they, they sort of lay siege from a long distance. They fire little bomb projectiles. Let me know down below, by the way, what you think about that uh, Legion idea. Or what your ideas for Legion are. I'm sure you've got them and I'd love to hear them. One of the beauties of this game is that it's uh, largely, largely respondent to the whims and woes of the community. Like those T2 ships, for instance. Man, snipers are powerful. You can see them marching forward here and just ravaging any of these static defenses. Two or three shots takes down a <clears throat> takes down a pit bull tower. A couple more shots will take down basically anything else standing next to it. Yeah, those snipers are so painful to deal with. Heat tigers as well, rolling out of the back line. Let's take a let's take a look at the economy here for the red team. Absolutely beautiful. 
More of these VTOL ships coming up. Where did the other one go? Did it get shot down? Must have been shot down. How unfortunate. Such an expensive boat. A ship. A ship. As Captain Jack Sparrow would say. Pawn's uh, kind of lollygagging over here. Wow, the red team really came back on this one, huh? They were, uh, they were, they were on the edge of the edge of Hell's Gate here, and they uh, managed to pull themselves back. The question is, I know that this replay happens to go for quite a bit longer. So, uh, what on earth is the green team? Well, the, the green team, the blue team. But uh, right now, it kind of looks like the green team with this much green pressure over here. What is the what is the blue team going to be able to do to respond to all this? Gunships are quite nice. They're starting to pick apart a lot of this army here, taking down those Heat Tigers, taking down those Sheldon. Taking down basically everything here. Some uh, ticks, probably less important to focus on. I'd definitely say to get those heat tanks that are ravaging your base. <laughs> ravaging your teammates base. But you know. It's uh, you, you only, you, you win some, you lose some, right? Uh oh. Epic Tumbleweed is out now. Uh, for anybody who hasn't seen an Epic Tumbleweed, uh, welcome to the Brightworks. <laughs> We like to play with those quite a lot. They're uh, hilarious. Whoa! Massive chain reaction right there. I think a Shiva was firing on a tick and they accidentally friendly fired the entire base here of Morphos, who was uh, brought to his knees as all of the economy chain reacts in one massive swoop. Devastating right there. I'm telling you guys, the tick is the most powerful unit in the game. A lot of people think I'm joking about that, but unironically, I think the tick is probably the most powerful one in this game. Just its cost effectiveness and its its sheer determination, despite its small size. What a what a beast on the battlefield. Epic Pawn is out here. Tons of these assimilators as well, the battle mechs. They have a really hard time against those ticks, it would seem. But they do pretty good against everything else. Seems like their laser blasts are pretty focused. Marauders have been brought out to try and uh, help stem the flow of pawns that is just running out of the back line here. What you want to do when you have these pawn things this is a, a moment of coaching, perhaps. Uh, you don't want to rally them all the same way, like uh, like like you can see here where they all just go to the same point like this. What you want to do is spread them out. So you want them to to spread out like a, in a row like this, and then you want to send all of them in uh, different patterns towards wherever you're going. You, the, the whole idea is to make the units look back and forth, back and forth. And uh, that's, gonna, that's going to give you a much better effect. Uh, so if you're wondering what the scarring is from... <laughs> that would be the epic tumbleweed. A rat is out now. It's a uh, brick with a hugest blank gun, hugest bleep gun. I don't know what that projectile is it fires, but it's, uh, it's, it's devastating. And it fires 20 of them. Oh, careful about friendly fire, though. Eesh. Okay. That was close. <laughs> it could have been a whole lot worse. Yeah, that tank just fires a ridiculous amount of DACA downrange. It's, uh, it's pretty dangerous. Welder's here. Getting their, uh, getting their welder guns out and trying to stem this flow. Doing a much better job of stemming the flow here than, uh, than those snipers are probably going to be able to. This would, again, work a little bit better if those units were spread out because the the, uh, the welders here as well as the snipers would have to flick back and forth. Especially Shiva or anything heavy like that as well. Yeah, you'd have to uh, you'd have to exert a tremendous amount of resources in order to uh, move move your units back and forth in order to, to combat the large area of effect running towards you. The commander goes down right in the middle of this base and that is going to be uh, basically all she wrote here for Fuzone. Looks like one of the blue team players has tapped out here. Yui, Yui Op also goes down, the commander that is. Not going to take down this Karganet that's standing strong against the uh, <laughs> against the floating Black Hydra. But somehow I feel like it's a little bit too little to, uh, to shut down that menace. Uh, yeah, this Black Hydra needs to be addressed. It has those laser cannons, right? So you can deflect all the plasma in the world, but those laser cannons are going to ravage your... Uh, well, anything underneath the plasma shields. They only deflect plasma, unless the uh, setting has been toggled on to the, where they deflect everything. Which is possible, because this is a, uh, you know, we're playing in a unique a unique game here, but... Uh, as of right now, I, I, I don't believe it has. It's not the default setting, anyway. Take out the build power, please. 
The slab is never going to go down if you don't take out the build power. Okay, looks like uh, plasma is normally deflected here. This VTOL ship is continuing to march forward. Root might not know that you can target units here. If you hit the uh, the Y key, it's going to allow you to uh, select the targets that you want to fire at. Very, very powerful to, uh, to choose what you're sh actually shooting at. Construction turrets are actually just disassembling the ship out of midair. Wouldn't that be horrible to be disassembled live? Just, just pulled apart at a molecular level. You're being dispersed among the uh, the ruins of the <laughs> of the storage containers, the storage the storage facilities of your uh, of your enemy. Does it have a huge explosion? Oh, it has a tremendous explosion when it dies. It makes sense. It seems like you'd need a nuclear reactor to power that thing. Paisat says, "How we surrender as a team." Uh, is that why this replay is so long? <laughs> No, I mean, there's still T3 coming out of the back lines here. Plenty of snipers as well. We're starting to hit that really critical mass where the snipers can just fire indefinitely, um, even using their shots on things as pathetic as the pawn, who uh, could never overshadow the might of the mighty tick. Very nicely done by Great Thought, who has managed to claw themselves a uh, economy strong enough to fund three different bases worth of production all over the place. That's, uh, that's no easy feat. We've got ticks running all over the map. That's a very worthwhile exhaustion of resources. Those those techs can grant you vision, they can sneak in between gaps in the enemy line. They're just a very, very powerful, very versatile unit all around. Well done to get those out and about on the front lines. This is a dangerous looking army of Shiva as well as a uh, catapult for some fire support. A couple of catapults for fire support. A pair of catapults, if you will. A uh, epic grunt. <laughs> The Epic Grunt is basically a Razorback, but with, uh, well, how much health does it have? Uh, it has less health, costs more. It's just the, uh, the Cortex way to get a Razorback, I suppose. It's pretty funny, though. It works almost exactly the same. Yeah, these Shiva are very prone to friendly fire here. So as the Catapults, actually, you can see that they are, uh, not afraid of firing danger close. Unfortunately, that, uh, often means that they do more damage to themselves than anything else. The Thor that could, making its way downtown, 1% health, Oh, when it gets bursted down by a couple of Tachyon Accelerators, the Pulsars. It's time to finish this game out, but it seems like neither team really understands exactly what they should be going for. Uh, does, do they have an epic bomber? They do not, they just have the epic dragons. The Armada T3 uh, aircraft plant has an epic Stormbringer that drops tumbleweeds, which is just hilarious. But it's uh, it's very powerful stuff. Very 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 good for getting that uh, that final kill off because it can drop from so far away. Ah, interesting. Starting up a Ragnarok here. We do have the uh, T2 constructor turrets as well, so that would be nice to see. Maybe a couple of those up here in the mountain. Yeah, it looks like you can fit in maybe uh, six or so, plus a couple in the front there. Yeah, that would be really nice to see. I love these grunts here. This is actually really nice because these grunts can start working on the aircraft. It's not very quick, mind you, but, uh, you know, it's better better than nothing. And they're, they're going to start flashing down aircraft whenever they can, as well as whatever's trying to run forward here. Excellent positioning there. Shiva tearing themselves apart here, trying to kill all of these uh, these pawns that are running in front of them. We, oh, great, we do have the, the, the welders here. I was going to say, we need some sort of shock troop in front. I didn't mean that as a pun. No pun intended, but, uh, yeah. Welders work great as a, a shock troop in the front in order to uh, burst down any of those those light units that would otherwise waste the rockets and the heavy projectiles of the Shiva. Uh, the Shiva aren't looking too healthy, though. The catapults have also gone down, and those are basically the biggest source of long-range firepower. The uh, Shiva are a siege mech, but they still have to get in range. They, they, they can't just fire from all the way across the map. They still have to move pretty close to within range here. Wow, that, uh, that pawn took the hit there. Shiva kind of unfocused here. I think definitely they should be going for the static defense. The uh, Tachyon Accelerators will burst them all down. And that will be all she wrote for that massive T3 push here. Uh, another epic tumbleweed is out on the field. Going to be headed towards this uh, towards this area. Let me just show you real quick. That's the explosive radius. That is the danger zone, by the way. That's not the uh, that's not the total effective radius. That is the that is the uh, 
the you will die if you're standing in this circle zone. <laughs> wow, I really thought this match was going directly into the hands of the red team, but now I'm not so sure. The blue team has managed to push back on the lines. I would love to see them starting to, uh, starting to maybe rebuild some of these metal extractors here. Again, easy to overestimate the, or underestimate the amount of the effect that those those metal extractors can give you, but especially if you're the air player back here, like, for instance, uh, Uiop, now has an air lab up. Yeah, getting some of those early, getting some of those metal extractors up would definitely be very, very powerful. Ragnarok will be coming up in about four minutes, barring that we don't stall here. There's a lot of resbots out eating up the wreckages on the field. Should be more than enough metal all over the place in order to fund a Ragnarok here. So I expect that that will come up with hardly any trouble. Black Hydra sailing into the sailing into the night. The Razorback shooting up into the air at it. It's quite funny to see. Whoa, looks like a tumbleweed explosion right over here again. You can see the massive crater of those things sleep. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I wonder why that thing died. I guess maybe the uh, pulsars here managed to shut it down. Uh, we should probably also have the epic defenses now that I think about it. Uh, X, B, yeah, we definitely do. So we can certainly see some of those epic defenses, the uh, the epic pulsar, the epic bulwark, all those very very powerful stuff, might be uh, might be worth investing in here. A couple of epic recluses, always interesting to see. They fire sort of it's sort of similar to the catapult in the, uh, in the in the type of projectile that they fire, but it fires a little bit differently. Hopefully we see these moved into on on some sort of flank here, and we can actually see that that uh, effect. Are these scuttles or bed bugs? These are just bed bugs. Yeah, just bed bugs. Uh, streaming bed bugs in one at a time, not really gonna work. You need quite a few labs and you need them all pumping them out simultaneously in parallel. Otherwise, basically all you're going to achieve is uh, creating some nifty looking fireworks all over the map. Don't get me wrong, I love fireworks as much as the next guy, but probably not the intended effect. Oh, surprise this grunt isn't shooting down the shuriken. There we go. Wow. Yeah, the uh, the blue and seafoam player both holding the front lines here. HDF trying to rebuild in the back. And the Ragnarok is still underway. More than halfway done now at 68, 69%. That is quite nice. A uh, minute and two seconds or so left before that bad boy comes up and online. But it certainly could do quite a bit of damage here. Let's see what the effective range is. Uh, you know, maybe I spoke a little too soon. It's kind of not really far foreign, far, far forward enough for... Allow me a mulligan here. I don't think it's quite far enough forward. There we go. To uh, do any damage to the back lines here. But it certainly could help take down some of these defenses, especially these pulsars here, which are very, very tanky. Chipping away at those from a long range might be well worthwhile. You, uh, you have the... Ragnarok, you might as well use it. That being said, it is a tremendous metal cost. Tremendous energy cost as well. Shouldn't be under underestimated. But it looks like Piazzotta actually does have enough energy to fund this bad boy. Once it does come up and online. Should be any second now. 95, 96. Reminds me of the Gustav gun. Oh, it's got kind of a face on the back of it. I never noticed that. Like a, almost like a gas mask. <laughs> the weapon is ready, sir. Now what we should do is we take all these aircraft and tell them to... Oh, build the advanced metal extractors right on top of it. Very nicely done. Love to see that. Very, very nicely done. Gustav gun is up and running here. Oh, the rocket spiders are out. You can see they are... Uh, they're kind of underwhelming, I'm not going to lie. They are... They're kind of underwhelming. They fire these rockets. I mean, they're good. They do they do a good amount of damage, but I would really I, I would expect them to fire like I don't know a big uh, a big stream of a lot of them like three three separate streams in different directions or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm just being hopeful. Maybe I'm just beyond all reason. A demon is out here. The flamethrower mech, showing us why it's never a good idea to stand in front of a flamethrower mech. <laughs> I 
now we're getting into that proper T3 late game. If you skipped ahead and you're just joining us, welcome back. This is, uh, this is what happens when you turn on the epic units and economies are let run loose. The front lines for both teams have essentially dissolved here, although there's still more and more units being pumped out to the front lines here for the blue player, really heavily relying on those snipers. But I don't hate it. Those snipers are very powerful, and especially considering there's basically no uh, opposition here. Yeah, it's not really the end of the world. It would appear there's enough snipers here to maintain a constant stream of shots in order to deal with the, uh, the pink menace running pawns forward. What a tremendous drain on the economy here. Yeah, there's going to be no metal coming up. Definitely would love to see these switched over to pawn or switched over to ticks rather. With the uh, with the pawns, you're essentially just spending more money for less effective range. So I think I think switching over to uh, switching over to a tick might be well worth it. Wow, this can be paralyzed. That seems uh, that seems unfair. This thing definitely seems too big to be paralyzed. <laughs> Twenty five thousand metal, well more expensive than the juggernaut even. Um, yeah, paralyzing that seems like it should be a, uh, a, a non-option. Well, the Ragnarok has managed to burst down those Tachyon Accelerators in the middle of the map. That is quite nice. It does actually leave a gaping hole in the armor of the red team right down the middle. Uh, eventually, units could probably punch through that, but really the economies are just continually growing over here. I missed some sort of run-by over here on the right-hand side. Excuse me. A sip of my drink. Ah. Not fully awake until I've had at least a couple of cups of water. Apparently water is supposed to be better for you than coffee. To, uh, to wake up in the morning. I, uh... I'm not a big coffee fan. I gotta say. I'm not, I'm not like, uh... I'm not. I'm not really into it. I don't. I don't know enough about it. I, I haven't done my homework. <laughs> All I know is that uh, when I when I drink coffee, I get the jitters and I start to shiver. The whole world starts to shake, and I don't think that's. I don't think that's the intended effect, right? Still, I'm very curious why we're going for regular pulsars when the epic pulsar exists. Uh, okay, very nice. We are going to go for a forward Ragnarok. This one probably going to be able to get a little more effect. Yeah, you can see this can actually reach out into those uh, into those bases over there. Very good to see. Hopefully this one can come up on online for the green player. That would be a nice way to uh, nice way to make this uh, make this game somewhat a little bit closer to an end game here. <laughs> Battle mix rushing forward, trying to get a little bit of an effect. Yeah, I mean, in uh, in large enough teamwork, these battle mechs can definitely tear through basically anything they come up against. T1 certainly, but also some of that T2 as well. Looks like there will be a little bit of a combined effort, as now some of the uh, the grunts, epic grunts, and the fiends from our uh, Seafoam player Gazi here will also join the battle mechs in trying to punch forward. Are these a plasma projectile? They are not. They're a laser projectile. Interesting. They're like a uh, they're like a burst laser projectile. Very strange. But it does mean that they penetrate those laser shields, which is really the important note here. And now uh, you can see with one of those lasers down, or with one of those shields down rather, the next one goes down as well, and that suddenly leaves the front of the red base critically exposed here. Simulator battle mechs, they're pretty powerful. I'm trying to do whatever damage they can before they go down, but I think it will not be long before they are shredded into oblivion. Nicely done taking down those plasma deflectors, though. That definitely softens this area up a little bit. The rat can fire so far away. Its, uh, it's field of fire is tremendous, just because it, can, it just lobs projectiles like crazy. You can see it actually fires rather quickly. If you just tell this thing to fire into an area, it will fire with a devastating effect. It, is, it, it can fire. It can actually fire really, really fast. Considering how, considering the volume of fire it puts out and the uh, the strength of each projectile, it's a it's a devastating number. You can see when it focuses on a on a unit for a minute here, and they just evaporate. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, looks like that forward Ragnarok was shut down. Not sure exactly what killed it, but uh, yeah, those uh, those those poor construction turrets definitely didn't last. Or construction drones, I should say. It seems odd to do it, but you can always build a Ragnarok out here too. Wouldn't mind seeing it at this point because uh, we're gonna need something to end the game here. A lot of bombers would also do it though. If the uh, if the purple player just went into a bunch of heavy bombers, that would that would certainly be able to end this game. Oh. Oh, this could end the game too, though. Nautilus Commander with five epic dragons. Very, very powerful unit. Those can take a devastating hit. Like, they, they really can soak a huge amount of damage. More than anything, they should, uh, they should be able to punch through those defensive lines. Still gonna need some sort of fighter support, though, because uh, currently there is a, although only T2, uh, a fighter screen. I mean, I'm not sure what else he would go for. There's no T3 fighter, but uh, <laughs> still, uh, yeah, the the T2 fighters. I mean, it's not ultra dense, right? Like, there's there's still the possibility that something could squeak through. Ticks here gonna get an advanced metal extractor. Very nicely done. This is why you need uh, some T1 constructors to just go around building light laser turrets. Seems seems a little trivial in the late game, but it actually can be well worth it. Snipers here, ravaging everything that comes out of this line. There's so many snipers, this is amazing. I'm so impressed that they're actually able to keep up here. A lot of them have gained a huge amount of experience too though, so they're also firing very, very quickly. They're reloading a whole lot quicker. Yeah, gonna back them off. I think it's probably a good idea. The Arbiters get their chance to fire their missile, and it doesn't take a lot, but eventually those missiles start to connect. Things start to die. Empires start to fall. <laughs> Still not using those dragons. I wonder what we're saving them up for. Maybe going to try and combine forces here with Root, who is uh, in the back line here trying desperately to get some sort of a scout out. I don't mind it whatsoever. Are there bombers out? I, I, I thought I saw bombers, but maybe those were just scouts. Maybe I'm, I'm imagining things. I'm imagining ways to end this game here. This is tricky. There's a steady stream of T3 units leaking through on the right-hand side. It's dangerous. This rat is starting to slowly, very, very slowly lose health. One fiend breath at a time. <laughs> A Shiva shot does 3% damage to it. It does, uh, sorry, 1% 1 per, 1 damage to it. It went from 84 to 83, that's why I have the number 3 on my mind. I'd love to see some anti-aircraft units parked over here. This is something that I, I see a lot of the times. Is if, you, uh, if, you have the, if you have units that are able to push under the enemy air wall, you, uh, you know that you're going to be able to park some anti air there, so you might as well, and you can just completely disassemble the uh, disassemble the, the air wall of your enemy, and then, well, you can move your dragons in for one. So these are regular dragons right here, just for a comparison. That's a regular dragon, okay? This is the epic dragon. The scope is sort of difficult to comprehend, but it is almost twice as large and uh, very, very tanky. Epic Karganath. Karganath battles are so derpy. <laughs> They're just constantly firing at one another until one of them falls. Feels like a punch contest. Alright, we have the scouts going out. Wow, they're scouting. They're gonna scout the air wall. That's really all they're interested in. What on earth was that scout? <laughs> I'm so confused what the point of that scout was. The epic dragons are spotted, though. Suddenly those fighters are gonna be very, very necessary. <laughs> Flak trucks might be uh, well within order as well. Somebody's got to end this game. You've got to be risen me. The uh, the epic dragons. Uh, 
couple of them going down to the fighters there. Wow. I'm impressed. Those T2 fighters, wow, they bursted them down. Well, I, uh, I severely underestimated the power of those T2 fighters, taking down a drastically more expensive air force with uh, just, just that many fighters. Very, very nicely done. Really good stuff. May need to, uh, may need to rethink how, I, how I'm considering those fighters. Very powerful. I, uh, I think if anything, that's just warrants the uh, warrants the yellow player to go back into a T2 lab and start building up a fighter screen of their own. That or start using the dragons where there aren't any fighters. I mean, the purple fighter screen has actually deteriorated pretty badly after that attack, so I wouldn't mind seeing more and more pressure being applied here. The scouts are being reused. Uh, yeah, I'm just curious what the point of them are. Like, we... Let's check the player view, I guess. Okay, so most of the blue player's base has kind of understood where it's at. The, the, the Seafoam player, the purple player, and the green player. Um, they don't know about this player back here. There's a, there's a defensive Ragnarok, I suppose. These brutes are so dangerous. Not brutes, rats. That's what they're called. Rats! Why'd it have to be rats? I think a push on this right-hand side could work for the uh, for the blue team. They've got the epic Karganets, which do have anti-air, but also they have those uh, missiles that they can fire as well. They have the rats, which I believe can fire up at the dragons. Yeah. <laughs> the, the epic dragon's big enough that the rats can even target them. That's, uh, that's quite impressive. Fighters are sent in once more to sweep down that dragon, and they will clean it up. Don't know exactly how many fighters that was, but it couldn't have been more than maybe 30 or so. Very impressive. Great thought. Has a uh, has a great thought. Yeah, need, need to make some plays for sure. The right-hand side is falling rather quickly here, as there is now uh, no more units coming up. Looks like the yellow player Nautilus Commander forgot to keep expanding, and so now is running out of eco in the back line as the epic Karganeth are pushing their way forward. This is this is becoming dire. The uh, do we have a commander over here? Elite or no? Sorry, Roots Commander is back here. That's one option. Try and degun these. I don't think he's gonna get there in time though. No, these epic Karganeth, they uh, they can fire pretty far. They hit pretty hard too. I have a feeling this is the end of the yellow player, Nautilus Commander. Completely caught with his pants down here. Pants on the floor, and uh, nothing nothing he can do about it as these uh, yeah these epic Karganeth take down his T3 lab. Hate to see her leave, but love to watch her go, as they say. Root moves the commander forward, gets the D-gun on one of those epic Karganeth. The second one will be sure to burst down the commander, lickety-split. And uh, these these bad boys can continue their assault forwards. Meanwhile, the rats in the back have continuing... The rats in the back. Why that remind me of uh, Lil Nas X? Anyway. The rats in the back have continued to apply pressure as they roll on forwards here, shooting away at extreme distances lobbing projectiles of mass destruction. Build power is going down back here. Epic Czar was created. Fires like a nuke, basically. <laughs> a mini nuke. A single Epic Karganeth, though. Getting some damage in. Oh, is it going to get the advanced fusions? It will get the advanced fusions. Causes a massive chain reaction in the back line here. Sets off half of Root's economy over here. All the a whole bunch of energy converters, a bunch of build towers, build power, all that good stuff going down here. Eventually, it's the slow death for the red team as the rats, the epic Karganess, all that start to push on forward. Oh, the epic bulwark is completed. This thing has a tremendous range. Two of them actually are up and running. Yeah, very, very huge range, but these rats are already well within range of the red player's base. You can fire on all of this stuff. Need to keep rolling, though. This many plasma fields? I think I really appreciate the tick. <laughs> 
makes a compelling case for it when uh, when you have this this much plasma deflectors. Kind of just want something small that can slip through the shields. The rats are a little unfocused at the moment. I think they definitely could get a little bit more effect if they were, uh, you know, if they were if they were directed to just roll forward here. But it looks like they're going to back off of the front lines. But they will both go down, losing their lives for it. Unfortunate, because I really think they could have caused a massive chain reaction back here. But Root will manage to stabilize uh, somewhat anyways. All of his build power is going into repairing his advanced fusion reactors. Definitely not where he means for it to be. He also doesn't really have a way to get back into the tech ladder here. He does have a T1 constructor, so if he goes for that T2 constructor, you can get some of those T2 uh, construction turrets, fill in this gap right over here, and eventually he's going to be able to bounce back into this here. But uh, for now, he's in a little bit of a paralyzed state. Great thoughts, Commander. Hanging out here. Is the blue team down to one commander? Oh, they sure are. Where's their commander at? Where's their commander at? I'm looking for... Oh, here he is. HEF is the final commander for the blue team here. Wow. Yeah, this is actually a really close, really close match. If the blue team loses this commander... Definitely don't think you should be standing right next to these advanced fusion reactors or these batteries or all this explosive nonsense. <laughs> a straight bullet or two and this commander could definitely go down. That's not really what you want to have happen. I would definitely park it a little bit further away from those eco centers. Maybe somewhere over here or over here. I don't know. Just anywhere a little further away. Razorbacks are finally out and I think it's a much better option for dealing with this swarm rather than the snipers. Um, they're going to have a much easier time holding back this, uh, holding back this, this line. Oh, Great Thoughts Commander is uh, one of his commanders, I should say. Takes down a couple of these Razorbacks with the D-Gun, but there's still one more in the back line, and it will get the advanced fusion reactors taking out half of the pink player Virtual G's base here. Now two to one. <laughs> Prayut King, Prayut Kong rather, the uh, hot pink player, his commander is tucked away in the top left-hand corner. Great Thoughts is hidden exactly where it stood before. Uh, looks like a calamity is up and running now. Um, well, this could definitely definitely do some damage. It could hit the blue player right here. It could hit the uh, the seafoam player in the back line here. If uh, if any of those shots ricochet or, or do any funky business. Wow, that was kind of beautiful, wasn't it? The Czar firing into a cluster of all those units. Calamity is actually almost completed here. Oh, another Razorback snuck into the back lines, trying desperately to tear down the advanced fusion reactor. Will get shut down, though, very luckily. Oh, this Calamity is not nearly... Oh, it is near... Okay, that was weird. Weird little visual glitch there. It looked like it, was, it had barely started here. Oh, a Karganeth is in the back lines, too. Yeah, we're going to take out the blue player. I think it's a great idea. Uh, oh, he's hitting the back lines here. Uh-oh. Oh, if these chain react, they could definitely hit this advanced fusion reactor. HDF is way too close. Uh-oh. Oh, they get the commander. They managed to snipe the very last commander for the blue team, taking him off of the leaderboards and securing victory moments before defeat from this Karganeth in the back lane here. Holy cow, what a close match. Was not expecting that to be nearly as close as it was there. The final calamity. My goodness. I'm in shock. I'm in shock. <laughs> that was insane. Wow, the, the final Calamity shot chain reacted a couple of Aphises to kill the commander that was standing way too close to them. Danger close, if you will. And uh, the commander goes down, securing the red team victory after all of this epic battle. What a long one, but it was actually really nice. Not a whole lot of spam, or at least not too much spam, so the game kept up its FPS. I always appreciate that. Love when players go into those epic units. I feel like toggling those epic units really convinces players to uh, play that, that late game rather than spamming a whole lot of T1 units, I guess, except for Prayut Kong, who was really into the, the pawn spam over here. Anyways, thanks a ton for watching. Yes, you, right there. Uh, like and subscribe, all that good nonsense, and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.